Well, the business of YouTube is a massive one. The unit of Alphabet generated more than $6.5 billion U.S. in revenue in the most recent quarter. And YouTube is also sharing some numbers on its size and scale here in Canada. It says its creative ecosystem contributed more than $2 billion to the Canadian economy last year. Tara Walpert-Levy is vice president of the Americas with YouTube, and she joins us here in studio. Thanks very much for your time. Oh, thanks for having me. It's great to be in Canada. So we like to talk about our numbers. That, that $2 billion figure, like what, what goes into that? What is that comprised of? Sure. I mean, we were really excited. Our partners, Oxford Economics, are the ones who measure it. And it makes up a couple things. One is what you'd imagine, basically direct revenue that creators are making off of our platform. And so we have 10 different ways they can make money. It's mostly ads and some direct from consumer. And then there's a whole segment of the indirect revenue, which is you know, these creators hire teams, they're businesses, they rent studios, they rent equipment, and they also find other opportunities based on building their brand, like brand deals or speaking opportunities. And so it really all rolls up into the $2 billion contribution to Canada. And sometimes I see there's like integrations with other platforms out there or other players out there to help to, I guess, monetize beyond what you can do with advertisers. Exactly. And some of that would be in sort of that latter bucket, right? These brand deals or sponsorships that all come from, you know, the, the 35,000 jobs in Canada that are created by this creator economy. I've been covering this business long enough to know there was a time when we talked about the creator economy or, or what that might be. Now it is very much alive and well. But, yeah. I, but, in, but in terms of the success rate, right? Like there's a lot of people who now they want to grow up and be a YouTube star. How challenging is that when it comes down to it? Well, it's funny. I mean, one of the things that we are most focused on is making sure that our platform is the absolute best for creators, both creatively, including getting started, you know, financially in terms of being able to build a brand and business doing what you love, and also emotionally in that sort of connection with audiences and, and fans. And so, you know, we get told all the time by our creators, no one is saying it's easy, it's a career, it's a livelihood like everything else. But we have removed a lot of the obstacles that prevented people from launching content and having a voice. And that's really what our mission is, is all about, is to enable that diversity and, and that range of stories. And, and YouTube does get credit for leaning into that creator possibility earlier than arguably most did. I, I, would, I would imagine if you're talking to creators or partners or advertisers, they also ask about the broader social media landscape. You know, you've got players like TikTok out there mm -hmm. as well. So in terms of those, those new ways that you're sort of leaning into making it even a more creator-friendly uh, environment. Is it, is it challenging when you've got other players who, who want part of that pie as well? Well, I mean, listen, YouTube has always played in a very competitive space. Yeah. And so I think what's been unique from the very start is some of the unparalleled breadth and diversity of the content on the platform. That's why we're so focused on remaining, you know, what many creators tell us is their home. And so I think as long as we keep working and, and earning our spot in, in their hearts and their minds and their pocketbooks every day, you know, we'll continue to be the, the best space for creators and advertisers and viewers. And frankly, a little additional competition only makes us up our game. Now, we've uh, spoken with members of the, uh, the Alphabet executive team as well about some changes to laws in Ottawa. Bill C-11 is mm -hmm. one that people talk a lot about, you know, the idea of, uh, and it's obviously not just a, a Google or YouTube thing. It's, you know, how do we make sure that Canadian content is rising to the, you know, the, the top uh, and that it's a le le level playing wheel, real, mm -hmm. uh, field with traditional broadcasters as well. How are you navigating through some of those changes that have been taking effect? Well, it's frankly fascinating. I think one of the biggest changes we saw, and that's true here and around the world, is, is really seeing the creator voice in the legislative process. So I'm sure you've seen how these folks are out there talking extensively, both during sort of the, the legislation phase and now during the consultative phase. And you know, our goal is to continue to support them. These laws affect their livelihood and their businesses in really material ways. Um, and so we're just trying to sort of help make sure that everyone sort of understands as clearly as possible what's possible and try to create opportunities that work for everyone and including these creators. Speaking of understanding, everybody's talking about artificial intelligence <laughs> as well. I know your parent company is all in on AI, but I wonder what you think about. Like, is, is AI something that um, uh, plays into the story of being a creator tool? Uh, is, there a, is there also a conversation around how AI changes the content itself? Mm -hmm. 
Well, you know, YouTube and, and Google have been AI first for a long time, yeah. right? So there's a lot of ways that we have historically used AI for recommendations and other things that help these creators build their businesses. And we think there's a lot of ways that folks can use it as creative prompts, right? And we went to many of our creators early um, you know, as we launched BARD and sort of got their feedback on what would help them with everything from idea generation to you know, ways of making creative more efficient to different ways that they can they can play creatively. So we think it's a pretty big opportunity. And um, so so how, how, like for the size and scale that you already have, when we said that $2 billion figure, can you guess, give us a sense on how, how much you are growing at this point in a country like Canada as well? Yeah, I mean, look, we continue to see a lot of runway in Canada. Uh, both sort of in the Canadian market and also your creators do an amazing job exporting their content. You know, 90% of the views for many of these folks is happening outside of Canada. So it's an incredible opportunity for Canadian creators and, and culture builders to extend the reach around the world. And, and we think there's a lot more to go there. Okay.